unfortunately, uh, Tobias, who's the first author of this paper and became sick last week, so it's my um, uh, job now to uh, talk you through our work. And this is in collaboration also in addition with Tobias to with uh, the great Phil Bernstein from Microsoft Research uh, and also Carsten Binning, who's also great. here, right? And also great. Um, <laughs> my name is uh, Victor Leis, right? And I was, clicker doesn't work. It's okay. It's on, but it doesn't work. Okay, there we go. Um, and what's interesting is I was one year old when Stonebreaker uh, kind of um, uh, talked about this HPDS, uh, about this paper where he classified distributed OTP systems and he uh, created this uh, very well known distinction between or uh, classification between shared memory systems. Uh, shared disk and shared nothing systems and shared memory nowadays we have anyway every multi core is a shared memory thing so that um, it's not so interesting but this shared disk versus shared nothing um, split is kind of has still um, is, is kind of important and has been used for many years. Um, now um, of course this is almost 40 years ago this paper and so in, in that time many things changed and one of the biggest things that changed is, is like we, most of us know, right, is the cloud, right? And so Gartner uh, last year, year before, estimated that the DBMS market is $80 billion in terms of revenue per year. And that um, in 2021, about half of that was, was cloud. And now it's probably already a bigger fraction. Um, and also one consequence of that, that at the moment, very likely the, the biggest DBMS vendor by revenue is actually a bookshop, right? And because of this uh, amazing trend, right? And their, um, one of their most important products in the, in the OTP space, right? Which is what this talk is about, is as you, as many of you know, is Aurora, right? Um, and I'm also sure many of you know, know this architecture. So they have one um, kind of um, primary node where, both reads and writes go to, and then they might have um, a bunch of other replicas or secondaries, which are mainly used for um, availability, high availability, and also to scale reads, right? Um, and the other thing that they have, and this is what they did basically to bring kind of this, um, uh, to make this kind of a cloud native architecture, they have this shared storage abstraction, right? This is a distributed kind of shared disk if you want, right? But of course, um, there's now two kind of things that are interesting. If we go back to Stonebreaker's classification, we kind of see that it, it, it doesn't fit perfectly. Well, maybe this shared storage is a bit like his shared disk idea, but in a way, the compute layer here is not completely distributed at all, right? You can scale reads maybe, but writes are actually, you have this bottleneck, you have at most one node where all the writes go to. Right? And so you have these two different interesting observations that his classification doesn't perfectly apparently fit in, in, in this cloud world. And also that the most common OTP architecture in the, in, in, in the cloud is actually not fully scalable in, in some respects, right? So in, in this talk and also in this paper, what we try to do is kind of uh, improve our own conceptual clarity, or at least that was my personal goal of this work, um, of this kind of OTP landscape in terms of the architecture, right? And one sub question is exactly this question. Why is it that this Aurora architecture is kind of the default standard architecture and not, in, in, not a fully distributed system, right? There's been decades of research in, in a fully distributed systems, right? Where you don't have the single writer. And, and then um, through that path, we will also see kind of alternative architectures which have maybe better scalability properties and but that will create new research opportunities, opportunities that I'll be talking about. Okay, so how, how do we get this conceptual clarity, hopefully? So what we'll be doing in the, in the next couple of minutes, most of that talk, um, I will be presenting four kind of different architectures, and we call them archetypes, right? And they are meant to be kind of easy to understand and cover kind of this uh, design space. And of course, now you can map many existing systems onto these architectures, but there's also, of course, other systems that kind of combined ideas of them, right? And our hope is, of course, that it's, it still helps, right, this, this kind of lens or this kind of focus that we present here to understand kind of this, this space. 
And so once we have these architectures, we kind of analyze them and um, we kind of focus on kind of the scalability of the data access path, right? For instance, we don't look at concurrency control, which of course is also very important, but in a way, uh, data access, um, uh, access individual roles, right, is kind of the foundational operation, right? If that doesn't scale, nothing, nothing scales, right? So, uh, and specifically, we'll look at reads and writes, think of like point reads, right? And um, in the uniform and skewed um, um, workloads, right? Um, in addition, what you also want in the cloud, in addition to kind of this data access scalability, you want elasticity in the sense that you want to scale compute and storage separately, right? So that you don't pay uh, maybe unnecessarily for storage when you don't need it just to get higher performance and, and the other way around. Okay, so uh, now let's start. Let's talk about these archetypes. And the first one we've basically already seen, right? This is basically the uh, Aurora design, which we call single master, right? So we have this... Um, a primary or read write node where all the writes have to go to that. That's why we call it single writers. Uh, and we have this shared, shared storage abstraction, right? And of course, this is not just Aurora. And nowadays, there's many different examples, many other systems uh, copied this very influential architecture. In Microsoft, you have SQL Hyperscale, and Google recently launched an um, LOADV. Now, if we look at our kind of um, properties that we want to have, and um, if, if we start, let's say, for we do uniform random reads and how much, how, how well they scale, well, you can scale them to some extent by adding more of these read replicas, but it's not perfect because the data is here not really partitioned. So in a way, they are replicated on each of these read nodes, right? So it does scale, but it's also not that cost effective, right? Writes conceptually, they don't scale at all, right? Because you have one node, all the writes go go to it, right? There's no nothing you can do once you have kind of scaled up that node to max. There's nothing you can do, right? In terms of elasticity, um, well, um, shared storage you can scale kind of independently. That that's pretty good. But again, this uh, because of the single writer, uh, you you kind of uh, you you kind of the limiting. Uh, your scalability of the compute layer is, is kind of limited, right? So in some respects, this architecture has, has some real weaknesses, at least conceptually. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, another very classic design, which we call partitioned writer, is kind of the distributed OTP design from, from textbooks, right? So this is think system R star. So here you uh, partition your data set, and then each partition has kind of one node that does all the reads and writes to that partition. Right, and there's also, of course, nowadays uh, many modern systems that follow this design. And here, what we get is now that because of this partitioning, reads uniform reads conceptually scale very well now, right? Because you can just add another node, and then um, the workload will kind of be spread out over them. So that's very good. And now, for the first time, we also get scalable writes as long as they're uniform, right? Again, the same argument: you just add more nodes, and then the workload will be spread out. And now what is a problem for this architecture is, is skewed um, access, right? So suppose you have one tuple that is really hot, right? Then it will end up in one of these partitions and then all the accesses, reads or writes, doesn't matter, will go to this partition and there's nothing you can do about it in, in terms of scalability. Um, in terms of elasticity here, um, you kind of see also in this picture, compute and storage are kind of you extend it in lockstep, right? So it's actually not so easy to scale them independently. That's how they, they you scale them in, in lockstep, right? Um, so how can we improve that specific aspect, the elasticity? Well, one way, and this brings us to our third architecture, is by now having, again, shared storage, right? But having nodes that can do, do both reads and writes, right? So this we could call like a shared writer systems. And there's been a couple of research proposals that follow this design, right? So, um, and here, um, the nice thing is at least conceptually, right? Is that the, you can completely independently scale compute from storage, right? You, because every node can read everything and write everything. Um, and same for storage, for the shared storage object, you can also grow this one independently. And so this looks pretty good, right? Because uh, reads and writes um, um, scalable now, but skewed reads are still kind of a problem because of this shared storage abstraction. They will kind of uh, you need some kind of synchronization at that level now, right? And and also maybe even bigger problem. Every even a very hot tuple will always go to this shared storage abstraction, usually through through the network, right? 
Um, so that's that's not not ideal, both in terms of the the scalability properties, but also in practice in terms of performance, right? Of going for every access through through the network. And so a small change here, and this brings us to our final archetype, is introducing a cache on each node. Right? And it's important what, I, what we mean here by this cache, it's not like a Redis cache on the side or something, but it is integrated into uh, the DBMS of each node. And, and the important, this is a coherent cache. That means that uh, you, you always, when, when you have a cache, you always know that this item is the most recent one. And if if you have you might have several copies of the same item if if, if that item is just read that, that works nice nicely and if one of them now writes to this item then all the other copies have to be invalidated right and that's very similar for instance what CPU caches do, do in in multi core CPUs right and if we now do this kind of in this uh, distributed OTP space um, and again do this analysis um, what we get is now exactly this problem that we had before, and these skewed reads now suddenly work beautifully well, because what will happen if, if once a couple of tuples are really hot, they will end up in all the caches, right? Every node will access them very uh, cheaply, and also can you can scale that by just adding more nodes, and then these skewed reads will be very fast, right? Elasticity is still very good, right? Because you still scale the shared storage and the compute separately, right? Um, and so in terms of the examples, so this is actually not such a widely used architecture, interestingly, but there are, of course, important, maybe the most important example is Oracle Rack, right? That's more than 20 years ago and um, old, right? And there's some papers from that time that, that talk about this architecture. And Tobias has been building a, a, a system called ScaleStore um, during the last couple of years that also follows this design, right? And so, and from from the way this analysis proceeds, you can kind of guess that for us, it seems like this architecture certainly very looks very promising, right? And certainly so prom promising that we should spend some time on it, right? As as a community, and and so the test we already seen, right? It has good scalability properties, and um, but also it has other very nice. Uh, uh, properties. For example, it supports arbitrary workloads. There's no user defined partitioning keys like in most of the partitioned uh, writer designs. And it works really nice with shared cache abstraction. Uh, you can put arbitrary data structures on it, on it just, just works basically. For instance, with the B tree, what will naturally happen, you don't hard code that or anything, the inner nodes, because they're really hot, they will just be cached on all the nodes, making access really fast. And then maybe the leaf nodes will not be cached, or, or maybe uh, they will be depending on kind of how large your data sets are. It's just naturally adaptive and, and workload driven. It's really beautiful in my mind. Now, if everything's so great, right? Why, why is it that this is not the standard architecture? Right? Why, why are the particular designs one and two, the uh, um, single writer and the partition one. What, why are these are the, the, the standard designs? Well, I think there's there's kind of uh, two main reasons. One, this design is much more difficult to to implement and just conceptually, right? There's there's much, um, many things going on. I'll, I'll talk about some open challenges in a moment. And 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 interestingly, also there's been in comparison with the other designs, uh, little research research on that, right? In the, in the last um, um, let's say twenty years, particularly in academia. And so, um, as I said before, we started kind of this the scale sub, uh, uh, project, and we I think we have a pretty good solution for cache coherence. Um, uh, so um, the, the shared cache abstraction itself I think works very well now, at least in our RDMA case which we built it. But there's still open uh, questions. For instance, the replacement strategy you actually want something that we call an um, altruistic, right? Actually, the, the caches the cache replacement strategy needs to be aware of the global states of the other caches because everybody is is kind of egoistic, then the overall performance will not be ideal. And there's been some theoretical work, again, 20 years ago by Gerhard Weikum, but I'm not aware of any system that actually implements that. And the elasticity is also interesting here. Conceptually, it's possible to build that, but um, coordinating that with the cache coherence is also very interesting. And I, I don't think anybody has done that. Transactions are very interesting. You don't need 2PC, interestingly, in this design, which is an interesting observation, but uh, how you do the lock manager, where you put the locks, shared memory or not, it's all open. And of course, now you want to run this in the cloud. They have different network technologies. You want to exploit them. What does it mean for, for, for the implementation and so on? So I think these are very interesting um, uh, topics, right? And then we'll hopefully work on them in the next uh, couple of years. 
but let me now in the end come back to the original question right and the paper of the title asks the question is scalable otp in the cloud a solved problem right and so uh, to answer that question right we created this new text taxonomy right in these four de designs and looked at kind of their um, their scalability properties and from this analysis right our outcome is that maybe we should focus more on this shared cache design and so the answer in the end is to the question well we're not quite there yet but we see the path to get there and and i think at least conceptually this shared cache design seems to be very very promising um, and then we, we need to work more on it thank you very much and i'm i'm very curious about your thoughts thank you Victor.